All right, hello again. Today we're going to discuss slope. And slope has many different types of names out there. Sometimes you might hear it as a rate of change. You might hear pitch, grade, uh, just to name a few. You might hear rise over run more often than not. Sometimes people say the change in Y over the change in X. And there's another one that says delta Y over delta X. And that triangle there is the Greek symbol delta. So quite a few different ways we can say slope. Now slope is describing a, a rate of change for a line. If we were to go from one point, let's say point A, to another point, point B. And we want to find the slope. So if I want to go from point A to point B, what I'm going to do is follow the rise over the run. Pretty much, I'll start at A, and I'm going to see how high do I have to go until I'm level with B. So I go up one, two, three, okay, I'm level. So I went up three, and since up is a positive direction, I went up positive three. And now from there, I need to get to B. I go to the left, I'm sorry, to the right, one, two, three, four. So I went to the right four, and right is a positive direction. If we go down, that's negative. If we go to the left, that's negative. So it's kind of very similar to how our y and x-axis are done. So my slope of the line, m, which denotes slope, is equal to three, the rise, over the run. So there's my slope. And that's how we find the slope using a graph. Now, there's other ways we can do it. Sometimes we can use points. And the formula looks a little bit different for that. So the slope is equal to, once more, the change in y. So take y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. To visualize this, I went ahead and drew a graph. And here's our point x1 and y1. Now, x1, this is a subscript, it's just a name. It's not an exponent, doesn't mean multiply, doesn't tell you to do anything. It's just a name. So I'm just saying he's the first x I see. Same deal with the y. His subscript is a 1, saying he's the first y coordinate. So there's his point. And then we have x2, y2, who's another point. Now, if we were to follow our rise over run, we would go up some distance and I'm pretending I can't count on this graph any number of distance. So I'm rising some change here in y. And how I can find the change is by taking y2 minus the y1. And that will tell me the value. Real quickly, I'm going to sneak back to our previous one. Let's look at it. So let's actually take some values for a and b here. a was at 2 on the y-axis. Right, that's where he was located in one, three, four, five, six. Okay, so B here is at four. I'm sorry, five. I can't count. So let's see, we got one, two, so there's A, three, four, five, there's B. If we take the difference between five and two, that sure enough gets us three, which is what we found in the change in Y. Same deal can apply for the x-axis with a and b. We can see b's at negative 2 and a here's at, I'm going to have to count, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. And if we find the difference between negative 6 and negative 2, we'll find that we end up with positive 4. Now the order is very important, so let's sneak back to our previous graph. Alright, so we found out y2 minus y1. Now we're going to run from x1 here over to x2. So the distance between these two would be x2 minus x1. So let's be careful. If we were to go back to our previous one, and I might be confusing a little bit, so if you need to rewatch it, do so. So our x2 was b. So we're starting where we take negative 2 and we're subtracting negative 6 to find the difference between these two points. Notice we had done the same thing here. We took 5, which was part of the B, and we subtracted 2, which was part of A. 
we're taking the ending point, the ending coordinate, and subtracting it by the starting coordinate. And negative 2 minus negative 6 is negative 2 plus 6, which sure enough gets us that positive 4. All right. So now we're going to need more practice with those because they're a little bit funky, but we'll get used to it. So this formula just uses two points. In fact, I don't even need a graph in order to find slope. I can use points. So let's see an example where we're asked to find the slope using the points. We have two points, x1, y1. And once more, these are names. It doesn't make a difference who you call x1, y1, as long as the subscripts match up. And we'll call this guy x2, y2. All right, so let's plug it into our formula. m equals y2. y2 is negative 2. Minus, because that's part of the formula, y1, which is 2. All over x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is negative 3. And make sure you plug it in. It's minus negative 3. Don't go, oh, the minus is already there. Not the case. We never give you anything that nice, right? We have to plug it into our formula. So now we have negative 2 minus 2, which you can think of as negative 2 plus negative 2. And on the bottom we have 1 minus negative 3, which you can think of as 1 plus 3. So you have negative 4 over 4, which is really negative 1. Now you might be thinking, what if I swap those points? Maybe I called this guy x2, this guy y2, and this guy x1, and him y1. Because it doesn't make a difference which one you call. As long as you plug into the formula correctly, in which you take y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. As long as you hold true to the formula, there's no issues with swapping. Subscripts have to match up, though. So slope equals. I'm going to use the green now. So we're doing y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is negative 2, all over x2, which is negative 3, minus x1, which is 1. So 2 minus negative 2 is really 2 plus 2. All over, we have negative 3 minus 1, which we can think of as negative 3 plus negative 1. And we have 4 over negative 4, which is still negative 1 for our slope. Same answers. So it doesn't make a difference. As long as you're finding the change in the y's over the change in the x, the signs will take care of themselves. All right, so that's using points. Just plug it into this beautiful formula. Let's go ahead and work where we're asked to find the slope of the line y equals 4. Now the question just wants the slope, but we're going to do a little bit more. This y equals 4 is a new. I don't know exactly what that looks like. So I'm going to guess and check, not using any of the previous methods we may have talked about. So uh, let's see, I got x and y. Let me plug in some points. I'll plug in a negative, a 0, and a positive. That's always a nice mix. So if I plug in negative 2 for x into this equation, all right, I did it. What does y equal? 4. OK. Now plug in 0 for x. Done. Because there's no x's. I'm plugging in a value that doesn't change anything. y is still 4. Same deal for 2. I could plug in anything I wanted, and y will forever be 4. x doesn't matter. But I'm going to do this just so I can reassure myself. So when I go to my graph, I'll go ahead and plot negative 2, positive 4, 0, 4, and 2, 4. So there's my points. And now we just have to connect the lines. OK. Let's see. I can get that pretty straight. So we have a nice horizontal line. Now, I didn't answer the question yet. They asked us to find the slope. So we do change in y over change in x. You can use the points we found here. And you can use any of them. It doesn't make a difference who you pick, because slope is consistent throughout a line. Or you can look at the graph and do rise over run. For our safety, we'll do both. 
So I'm going to say I'm going to start at this point in the red. All right, and I want to get to the point that's in the purple. It doesn't matter who I say. I'm just going to pick him because I feel like it. So from here, I'm going to rise. Well, I'm already on line with him, so I rise 0 over. And I need to run 1, 2, 3, 4. And 0 over 4 is still 0. Okay, so my slope is 0. Now you might be doubting yourself because you're like, really? That seems a little funky. So let's plug in the point. So I use the point negative 2, 4. And the other point that I used was 2, 4. So m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And once more, it doesn't matter who you pick. Since this guy appears first, I'm going to call him x1, y1. And I'll call this guy x2, y2. But you can switch the order as we saw earlier. So y2 is 4 minus y1, which is also 4, all over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is negative 2. Now 4 minus 4 is 0, and 2 minus negative 2 is positive 4, which is exactly what we talked about before, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So slope is still 0. Pretty cool. Now this is the case for y equals a constant. Let's see the same question a little bit differently, in which we're asked to find the slope of the line x equals 4. All right, so let's do our chart. x and y. Now x is set to be 4. So let me pick some y's. Maybe negative 2, 0, and 2. Alright, I'll plug in negative 2 for y. Did it. What is x equal? Still 4. Okay, plug in 0. Done. x still is 4. x is always 4. It doesn't matter what we plug in for y, x is forever equal to 4 because they said so. So now let's graph this. So we have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, x is always first, and negative 2, so right here. And then we have 4, 0, and 4, positive 2. And now we need to connect the dots. So there's our vertical line. And that's how it will always work for x equals 4. It's a nice vertical line. So now let's answer the question. They said find the slope. So pick any point, doesn't matter who you do. Uh, I'll start from the middle this time. I'll go from point red to point purple. And let's see, I'm starting here. So I rise one, two, okay. So M equals positive two, because we went up. And now do I run anywhere? No, I'm actually sitting right on top of my point. So I run zero. What's anything divided by zero? Undefined. Perfect. So our slope is undefined. Now you're feeling funky. You're like, oh, that does definitely doesn't seem right. Well, let's use the points. So our point was 4, 0. And our other point was 4, 2. Right? So we'll plug it in. y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So we'll call you guys x1, x2. I'm sorry, y2. And we'll call this guy x, wow, I butchered that, I'm so sorry. So let me try one more time, see if I can get this right. We have 4, 2, so we'll have x1, y1, though subscripts have to match up. That's the most important thing, and I kind of disregarded that for some reason. So 1's match up, and the 2's got to match up. As long as you can do that, you'll be safe. So y2 is 0 minus y1 is 2. And x2 is 4 minus x1, which is also 4. So we have 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. And what's anything divided by 0? Still undefined. So it doesn't change anything. It doesn't matter what's up top, 2 or negative 2. If we divide by 0, it becomes undefined. So the answer, which you're probably wondering about, is that slope is undefined. Sometimes you might hear people say there is no slope, 
because just try to think about it like a mountain and you're trying to scale this vertical line unless you're like a super rock climber there's no way you're scaling it right so let's say there is no slope because you can't scale it I like to say the slope is undefined you might want to double check with whoever you're working with for your professor same deal for the slope here except the slope is zero that is an actual result so let's recap this because these guys are special. We have y equals a constant. That means the only variable we see is y. We always have a nice horizontal line and slope is always zero. When x is a constant, we have a vertical line and slope is always undefined. There's some other cool things about slope. So we know when slope is zero, we got a horizontal line. When it's undefined, it's vertical. When it's positive and negative, it looks a certain way. So I want to introduce you to Mr. Slope Guy, in which inside his face, you can kind of see the slopes. If you see this, this is a line, and his slope is positive. And there's a slope here, in which it is negative. And you'll see the vertical line here, where his nose is, has a U for undefined. All right, clever, clever. And then finally, our last thing, and this is probably gets me the best, oh, is the smiley face. Well, I guess it's not really a smiley face. He kind of has an, an indifference face. It's flat, which is a horizontal line. And you can see his little cheek or dimples, whatever you want to call them, are zeros for slope is zero. So that's a cool way to remember. I'm just going to quickly erase because I doodled on his poor face. Mr. Slope Guy, and if you can remember him, it's a nice way to keep track of your slope. So until next time.